Hi guys, this is Mark Gabrielski, and today I just want to focus on uh, how easy it is now in vSphere 5.5 in the web client to create a virtual machine that can run a hypervisor. So be it ESX, Hyper-V, Rev, uh, whatever uh, your choice happens to be. I'm going to use ESXi as an example, uh, and we'll just go through it. Um, and if you look through some of my other videos, you'll see how I've built the, uh, the lab, so you, you may have some familiarity with the way the network is configured. Um, and there's some details in the show notes below about how I have the virtual network here configured, uh, which is important if you want to run virtual machines that are ESXi hosts. So what we'll do is we're going to build a new virtual machine, and this is going to be our ESXi uh, 5.5 host. And we're going to run it here on that hardware. Um, this cluster is where I'll be placing those, those when I actually manage them. Uh, we can put, it's going to be a template for myself, so I'm going to put it in the templates volume. And one of the things here is I like running my ESXi virtual machines as 5.5. Um, it does give me the option to, uh, the ability to present up to 10 network cards to my ESXi host. Which, will, uh, which is a nested virtual machine. That gives me the ability to play with networking in uh, some greater detail. So you still have to go ahead and lie to it initially as you're building it. Uh, you'll see that we make some changes as we go along. Uh, if you want to run ESXi 5.5 as a virtual machine, you do need to give it two CPUs. And this hardware virtualization tick that we go ahead and enable um, solves a lot of the old configuration problems that we used to do by hand um, and a lot of edits to the VMX file. ESXi 5.5 as a VM needs 8 gigs to boot and we only need uh, 4 gigabytes uh, of hard drive space um, to actually get that installed. If we left this as power virtual we would not see the hard drives we need to change that to LSI logic SAS. And it seems silly but we're going to get rid of the network uh, adapter, um, default network adapter shows up as VMXNet and that is not supported in our ESXi as a virtual machine. So we'll come back and we'll add some networking in a few moments. Uh, I also removed the floppy drive as there is no need to have a floppy drive in a virtualized ESX server. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure my CD-ROM for this virtual machine will point to my installation media for VMware ESX 5.5. And there, the virtual machine has now been initially configured. There is a couple of things that we still need to do here. So we're just going to go ahead and edit the settings of this VM. And we go to our general options. So we can change this now to other and one of the last choices is running VMware ESXi as a VM. Not really for production use, but it's great for us to run in our home labs and start learning and uncovering processes. If you notice, change the boot to EFI. It's just expected. And now we need to add our network adapters after we've made that change for the OS. Because it now recognizes that we have to use only one of these adapters. I've tested thoroughly with the E1000. And it's really great. The limitation of four network cards no longer apply in hardware version 10, so I can get up to 10 NICs in my virtual ESXi system. So as that's now finishing up, we can go ahead and power on this ESXi host. It's running as a VM. And we'll open up that console. And we can see that we're going through our normal ESXi process. So once you get this all up and running and installed, uh, you can treat it just like any other ESXi server. Uh, the point of today's exercise was just to show you the simplicity of the configuration. Uh, if you wanted this to be, um, we'll say, uh, Hyper-V or uh, one of the other uh, potential hypervisors that exists, um, one minor change uh, that we did that you would not have to do is as you build this, uh, if we were building it for Hyper-V, we can just go through and do the same. Place it here. We would do all the same options. 
throughout. Including CPU virtualization. If you don't get this, you will not be able to run virtual machines in your nested hypervisors. And that would be all that you would need to do to enable Hyper-V to run as a VM. So I hope this helped, and uh, you know, let me know any feedback. And uh, don't forget to check out the show notes uh, to make sure you have your networking here configured in the right way to allow for an ESXi or a Hyper-V VM to actually work. Thanks again.